today's video is the first of hopefully a couple or many videos that I'm going to be doing on what's in your soap. There, I'm going to be going over ingredients that you'll find in soap, good, bad, uh, some of the benefits, what, what I think of it personally, and then uh, you can make the decision on whether or not you want to use it. So today's video is the first of many in a series of what's in your soap. It's going to be basically me breaking down an ingredient that you can find in a soap. Uh, what are some of its benefits? Is it good? Is it bad? And my thoughts on it. So today's ingredient is sorbitol and it's a sugar alcohol. It's found in cosmetics and it's also found in food. It, it is a natural derived sugar uh, found in fruits and vegetables. And it's in a lot of actually diabetic foods because it, I don't, I think it doesn't spike your blood sugar as much as normal sugar would, but it can upset your stomach. But we're going to go on to what it does for your skin and why it's found in soap. So it's got a couple of benefits. It is a natural thickening agent, so it'll thicken a base or something that you put it in. So you'll find it in, that's why you'll find it in some cosmetics. It's a great moisturizer and it's great for your biome of your skin. The natural bacteria you find, it is food for it. So it's interesting because it's a sugar, it'll actually feed the bacteria on the outside of your skin. And that made me think of other ingredients that I see in soaps, like, like sometimes you'll see a little sugar or you'll see honey, which I think is great. And um, so the thing with sorbitol is that it's usually found in uh, pre-made bases of soap. So I'll explain what that is. Uh, you can buy uh, basically soap that's already made in uh, a base and you melt it down, add some more ingredients or add your fragrance and then let it sit overnight and it'll make into soap. Uh, the reason why people do this is because it's easier. It, uh, sometimes you don't have the facilities to do it. Uh, normal react, normal uh, soap making, like let's say a cold process soap, there's fumes involved, there's some heat. It's a little more challenging. You have to wait for it to harden and cure for a couple of weeks. So if you're looking to make soap quickly, easily, uh, safer, this would be a good alternative. And you'll find sorbitol and glycerin in these types of bases. And uh, the reason I, I've read a couple of things, I, I believe that it's to it's that norm through the normal soap making process of cold processing soap. There's enough glycerin and moisturizing in those in that soap, whereas a base might lose some of that, so they have to add uh, to make up for it. Is sorbitol bad for your skin? Uh, everything I read that it is not bad for your skin. Uh, I don't think there's any. People having reactions from this, you'll find it in a lot of different soaps. My personal opinion is I don't go out looking for it. I don't care if it's in the soap. I've used plenty of pre-made bases that were great, and I think it's 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 a cool option for people. And they make it their own sometimes, so you can add, uh, like I said, fragrance and 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 easily and quickly make a soap for yourself. It's e it's even good for for beginners to kind of get into it if you want to if you have a fragrance that you want to kind of add to a soap that that you haven't seen out there. Buy the fragrance and buy a pre-made base, melt it down, add your fragrance, and let it sit, and you have soap. So that's my thoughts on sorbitol. I hope you like this video, and there's going to be a couple more coming uh, with different ingredients. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and and uh, have a great rest of the day.